<laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to continue working on the 1948 Keller Super Chief and getting a bunch of parts refinished because I need to start chipping away at all these parts that I need to do. But before I do this, I need to give a big shout out to Cerakote because they have been working with me on my channel for a very long time. And if you want to duplicate any of the colors that you see in this video today, links will be in the description. I know a lot of people haven't heard about Cerakote, but it is awesome, the coatings they have available. They also have a line of powder coat. Prismatic Powders is another part of their company. So everything that I'm coating on the Keller is gonna be either in Prismatic Powders or in Cerakote. Most of the stuff on the engine I do in Cerakote because it's a super thin coating. It's chemical resistant. They have a bunch of stuff like the micro slick that I'm gonna do the size of the pistons. I'm gonna do the piston top coat on the pistons. So this thing is gonna be pretty much 2023 engine build once the engine's back together. Pretty much going to leave the axle in this state right here because I'm unable to figure out how to remove these drums. I put a puller on this and it's supposed to just go on these lugs. This is like a tapered shaft. You can see there's a keyway in there, but it doesn't want to budge. So if anybody in the comments or email me knows how to get these off or which puller you're supposed to use, let me know because I need to get these off so I can get this axle rebuilt. I know it doesn't need to be rebuilt, but I wanna clean it up, Cerakote it, or powder coat it, get everything redone, all brand new bearings. I don't want anything, you know, I don't want any failure points once the car's back together. Another thing I need your guys' help finding out is a place that can rebuild these right here. These are off a Ford truck, like an old, 
I don't know if it's a Model T, whatever, whatever it is, a Ford truck. I, I want to get these rebuilt or if there's a rebuild kit. And also if anybody knows of a company that redoes the rubber inside a torsion, torsion suspension, like the trailers, I want to redo these because the front driver's side one was collapsed. Just let me know in the comments and I want to get all this stuff back ready to go so it's all ready to go back on the car it was kind of crazy how all this stuff went together because this was was like there's like rubber in here this was on the axle there's this plate that goes in between this and the axle and also the axle looks like they shortened it or something i think this slides out if anybody knows what this axle is i think it's from a jeep but it also doesn't look like the one that comes from the Jeep. So it says this, it says use only hypoid lubricant on the side. It has this weird M insignia. I don't know if I was trying to Google that and figure out what that was. It's 16378. Um, it says 23 right here. And then these are patent numbers. I was gonna like sand those down, but so I could read the letters a little bit easier. But if anybody knows what kind of axle this is, it would greatly, help me out because then I could figure out how those, well, the first thing is figuring out how the drums come off. The front ones came off like butter. They're so easy. Just pulled the nut, pulled the bearing and it slid right off. No issues at all. The drum inside of it, this, these are the fronts. They barely have any wear. I mean, there's like no wear on these. Look at that. There's no lip, nothing. So, I don't think the rear one is stuck on because of lip. I think the taper on the shaft is just weird. So it's just causing it to not be able to release or something. So if anybody knows how to pull that off, I wanna get all this and also the torsion stuff. I wanna get all this stuff ready to go because the frame should be done in the next couple weeks, probably in the next two weeks. Once I get the stuff from Send Cut Send, I'll weld everything back together, get everything replaced, get it blasted, get it powder coated, get some stuff coated on it. We'll rebuild the axle, put the axle under there. Then I'll need this stuff with the torsion stuff so I can put all of the control arms on and then I need to find the ball joints and get all that stuff back together.
I should have filmed pulling the clutch pedal assembly apart, but sometimes I kind of get in the moment where I'm fiddling with something like this and then I forget to film and then it's apart and I can't I can't recreate something that I've already done. Because it had this pin right here holding everything in, I drilled this pin out, but to make this thing so I can service it after the car is back together and the floor is back on the frame, I don't wanna have to pull the floor off to drive a pin out to be able to service it. As far as the oil filter housing goes, unfortunately, this has some issues. So on the bottom, there was some stuff that looked like porosity, but it didn't look like it went all the way through. I blasted it, I Cerakoted it in the orange. 
it looked beautiful. And then I noticed that those porosity holes actually did go all the way through. So I ended up trying to weld some. I got these ones on the outside, but underneath this washer, there are some and I cannot get them. I'm gonna to continue to try, but if anybody has one of these C4 Fram oil filter housings with a top port and a bottom, a bottom port that looks identical to this, um, DM me. There is a email address in the description because I really wanna get this back on the car because when I pulled it apart, it was on there. Everybody said that this was an option that was added after the car was made, but I still want it because when I pulled the car apart, it was on there and that's how it was and that's how I want it to go back together. After a bunch of blasting and coating and spraying and doing all kinds of stuff, applying stickers, we have a bunch of parts done for the Keller and I think they came out amazing. So the first thing that I think is awesome is I finally got the pedals apart. I fixed a few things on them. There was some casting that was really sharp when you ran your finger across it. I hit it with a file to knock that down. I also coated the pin. So this is E100 Blackout. This stuff is meant to be on sliding surfaces and it's a really thin coating. So it's not like powder coat. It's not gonna chip, it's not gonna peel, it's not gonna flake if you prep the surface properly. It's meant to be on this, like this. And it's really nice because it's chemical resistant. It's not gonna have any issues ever rusting again. And it's probably gonna look like this for probably a hundred years. I didn't wanna change how the, you know, how the pedals looked but I wanted to have them coated because they were in the car. They originally were coated with that rubber stuff and it just really didn't look good. It flaked off over time and it just, it just looked like garbage. So now we have these nice pedals. I'll have to order the new rubbers for them. And we have this complete, I can't wait to put these back in once the frame is powder coated. And also I have this piece right here. So these are really hard to find and it had a few blemishes on it, but I got everything nice. And this is also the E100. You can see how nice this comes out. And I love how factory it looks. It makes it look like it's brand new from the factory. I also redid the oil filter housing with brand new decals. And you can see that everything is coated in that E100. Super thin coating. It's meant to be in contact with chemicals. So it's perfectly fine that I sprayed the inside of this and everything's coated so I don't have to ever worry about this rusting or any issues. I also have the decals on the bracket that holds the filter in place. And then I also started coating all the carburetor parts. So I'm gonna do them all in bronze just so it has some contrast because all that stuff looked rusty. The pot metal on the carburetor, all the stuff that's supposed to be aluminum that I found out wasn't. And it's, uh, you know, it doesn't look really good. It'll look good when you get a brand new carb for about a couple days or a couple months. And then they start to get dingy and just attract a bunch of dirt and stuff. I also got all this stuff coated in the E100. This is the bracket that holds the, one of the heater hoses. And I'm also going to do all the slides for the carburetor in the E100. You can see it right here. It looks great. Look at that. So nice and it's slick, so it's not gonna have any issues binding. Hopefully in the next video, I can get the frame completely finished and powder coated. So then I can move on to the axle and getting this thing back on the ground rolling and actually having it so rust and stuff doesn't keep falling off of it. And it's not super dirty or grimy to work on. I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to give it a thumbs up, throw a comment below, share with a friend. And as always, see you guys next time.